That's the Boz haircut they call that. You see those all over Oklahoma. Brian Bosworth. Brian Bosworth fired up. He was college football's great white height. He was the first player that really cashed in on his image. He played it for all it was worth. He created a celebrity status for a college athlete. An all-American anti-hero who even turned a suspension for steroid use into a public relations event. We tapped into a world that great football players couldn't tap into by use of this negative moment. On January 1st, 1987, Oklahoma played Arkansas in the Orange Bowl in Miami. But the player who got the most attention that day wasn't even wearing a uniform. Linebacker Brian Bosworth of Oklahoma and two teammates were banned after they tested positive for steroids. The Sooners all-star linebacker Brian Bosworth, the Boz, used his suspension to further his rebellious image. He had a t-shirt made, National Communist Against College Athletes. That's Brian, always wanting some attention. It got to the point where I, I, the, the persona took over the person. The, the deal with the Boz just became bigger than life. The buzz around the Boz wasn't just hype. In his two seasons at Oklahoma, Bosworth twice won the Dick Butkus Award as the best defensive player of the year and helped the Sooners win the 1985 National Championship. This was maybe one of the premier football players to play the game in the entire history of college football. It was Boz mania around this place. It was pretty wild. Away from the field, Bosworth was anything but a wild man. An academic All-American, his private personality belied his outlaw image. This is a couch potato who just wants to sit home and watch videotapes. He would say, it's like, I'm pretty boring when I'm off the football field. And really, he was pretty boring. When he first arrived on campus, he dressed like a nerd. His hair was uh, lacking style and just his, even his mannerisms, he needed to change his look a little bit. The Boz is, is highly controversial. He's highly sensational. Bosworth's Jekyll to Hyde transformation into the Boz was no accident. Plotting a future career in film and entertainment, he shrewdly devised a macho makeover, creating a character with the arrogant look and swagger of a Hollywood action hero. We had gone to see an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. One day, Brian shows up and he's got this Arnold Schwarzenegger haircut. And that was the beginning of it all. We sat down and talked about the entertainment industry and you know, creating this persona that you know, eventually became known as the boss. He said, well, it's entertainment. Mom, I've been in entertainment since I was five. Because sports is entertainment. That's the boss haircut they call that. You see those all over Oklahoma. From the start, the boss was a smash hit. The kids started getting their hair cut like that. It was all of a sudden, boom, there he was. And, and the media just latched onto it. Bosworth led Oklahoma to a 10 and 1 record, earning a trip to the 1987 Orange Bowl. After the regular season ended, the NCAA tested hundreds of bowl bound players for illegal drugs. Numerous players tested positive. Bosworth was at the top of the list. Bosworth is out of this game, suspended because of his use of steroids some months ago. A lot of people, when, when Brian got tested positive for steroids, said sort of, you know, aha, uh, no wonder. The cover of SI the next uh, week was the boss flunks out. And they had a picture of this guy who looked like a Neanderthal man on the front cover. But what Bosworth lost in respect among football fans the Boz made up for in notoriety. The steroid suspension merely enhanced his outlaw image and made him more marketable than ever. Without the steroid incident, he's just another college football player coming into the sports world. Getting my letterman, the entertainment world, within a week of that, opened up a whole new door for us. Forgoing his senior year of eligibility, Bosworth entered the NFL's 1987 supplemental draft. He was selected number one by the Seattle Seahawks and signed to an astonishing $11 million contract over 10 years. I think the hype that everybody's expectation that Boz was going to come in and storm the NFL and be the next Dick, Dick Buckus um, 
was so over the top and so beyond any of my control. It was good business sense. They had developed the buys, and the buys could probably fill seats. The way his contract was structured and the way he portrayed himself, everything, he had a game plan. He knew what he was doing. He was very, very business savvy. I like the way he plays football because he's so intense when he plays. And if he gets a lick, he tries to intimidate a little bit. Bosworth eagerly carried his bad guy image into the pros. As a rookie in the fall of 1987, he vowed to go after Denver quarterback John Elway with a vengeance. Fans in Denver responded by buying anti Boz t-shirts outside the stadium. Who sold the t-shirts that were anti Boz t-shirts? Brian Bosworth. He's the one who made the profit from anti Boz stuff. People blew that one way out of proportion because I didn't even know about that until the day after the game and I found out that it was in fact, my company that did it, and the proceeds of that money then went to a charity, but none of that was ever talked about. What I was doing off the field with Brian was a double-edged sword. It certainly created the excitement, but it also created a tremendous persona to live up to on the field. Bosworth paid the price. He became a prime target for NFL opponents. Despite a fine rookie season, his injuries piled up. Two seasons later, his NFL career was over. He was a marked man from the get-go. He came in, and uh, he had a bullseye on his chest, and everybody was trying to drill him right in the middle of that bullseye, and he got hammered. So all of a sudden, his body just didn't stand up to what the hits were, and unfortunately, the body eventually broke. But if the Boz never lived up to his hype as a pro football player, he had made his mark as a marketing visionary charting a path toward riches and fame, which would be imitated by countless others in years to come. You look at certain people that have revolutionized the game from the respect of selling yourself and selling a whole persona. Who would have known that some little uh, skinny white kid from Texas started the whole craze?